shameless 10 second plug here, but if you haven't already, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, which discusses everything except One Piece, although at the moment it's mainly a lot of Hunter Hunter. And now, Enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today I'd like to have an intriguing discussion which I brought up on the odd occasion in my Devil Fruit Encyclopedia videos, but it centers on the potential awakening of Logia Fruits. Now this is a lot of fun to think about because awakening is still a very foreign concept in One Piece. As you know, it's been mentioned here and there and we have a handful of examples from the Paramecia and Zoan classes, but the veneer of Logia Fruits has very much been dulled in the post time skip era with the advent of Haki and all. But if there was one way to catapult them back into the spotlight, it would be through an awakening. But briefly, just to recap, at the time of this recording, we do not know the process by which a user is able to awaken their fruit powers, or even if they consciously need to. I mean, I do think it's more likely that a user would need to push their abilities to a certain limit and unlock a higher level, but there is nothing to state that it's not the fruit itself that becomes unlocked, and then all future users of that power gain an awakened ability by default. There's just far too much in the realm of unknowns. But in the world of Paramecias, we have two canon awakenings, being Don Quixote del Flamingo and Charlotte Katakuri, both of whom demonstrated an ability to turn the environment around them into their specific power base, being String and Mochi respectively. And then in the land of Zoans, things are a bit more cut and dry because basically the users gain access to a new transformation that tends to be bigger, stronger, faster, more durable, and comes with rapid recovery. We saw examples of this pre-time skip actually being the Jailer Beast of Impel Down, as at least four of them were confirmed awakened Devil Fruit users. And just a little side note, Chopper's Monster Point, even though it has never been literally stated, is almost certainly an awakening because it gives him the exact same abilities as every other awakened Zoan user, as well as the same handicaps. But what about our ever precious Logia fruits? They become a bit difficult to think about because they can effectively already control their environment. For example, Kuzan can freeze everything around him and Crocodile can suck the moisture out of seemingly anything and thus turn it into sand. And yeah, it's not quite the same as what an awakened Paramecia can do, but it's almost there. And Logias are also very unlikely to awaken into bigger, stronger forms of themselves, a la the Zoan class, because it just doesn't quite fit them thematically. Although we have seen an example of something like that in the form of NL who turned into a big, big lightning dude but I don't think that's the solution. So we're going to have to pursue another more unique avenue with this class. And there is one particular idea I stumbled upon years ago that I would like to present to you all here and now. And everything begins by examining the island of Punk Hazard. Now Punk Hazard, whether you love or hate it as an arc, is quite possibly one of the most important landmarks in all of One Piece. And it may not seem that way because it is effectively a wasteland these days, but it was once a lab site used by the legendary Dr. Vegapunk. But more importantly for this discussion, it served as the battleground to decide who would become the next fleet admiral of the Marines following the events of the Paramount War. And the two contenders vying for this position were then Admirals Aokiji and Akainu, also known as Kuzan and Sakazuki. And as I'm sure you know, they are both extremely high level Logia users of the Hie Hie no Mi and the Maga Maga no Mi respectively, one giving its user the ability to conjure, manipulate and become ice, while the other does the same with magma. Now this is often forgotten, but Punk Hazard was once quite a lush location full of life, which yes, was eventually heavily impacted by Caesar Clown's weapon of mass destruction, but it was still nowhere near the what I'll call a Pokeball state that we now know of as Punk Hazard today. This form was only achieved after a brutal 10 day battle in which Sakazuki eventually proved victorious and so he became the new fleet admiral. Now judging from that time span as well as the serious injuries incurred by both parties, this fight must have been particularly vicious and required both combatants to be pushed to their absolute limits. So if either one of them was already an awakened Logia user, then that power would have almost certainly been put to use here. Now sadly, we don't have any visual evidence of the fight, but we do have the aftermath of it, which may be a very, very big clue because after 10 days of clashing, the climate of Punk Hazard was permanently altered to an island that is perpetually half on fire and half snowing. And very notably, fire and snow are the inferior elements of magma and ice, at least according to Devil Fruit Theory, that states that the Magma no Mi is the superior of the Mera Mera no Mi, while the Hia Hia no Mi is the direct superior of the Yuki Yuki no Mi, which I just find fascinating. But this sort of effect would have required a tremendous act which despite the ludicrous power we've seen Logia Fruits display, is something that we have no previous confirmed record of. In fact, the closest we've really come would be Kuzan freezing a gigantic area of ocean, but he also went on to state that it would only remain that way for just over a week, which makes this permanent climate change business a bit tricky to swallow. Now, an argument could be made that Kuzan and Sakazuki just use their fruits so often and so extremely that their effects will be longer lasting, like years, but that's much more of a boring train of thought. Instead, the idea that I prefer is that this is a Logia Awakening. 
the ability to harness an element so potently that it can completely reshape the climate of any given area, which in the One Piece world would generally be an island, I guess. But I really like this idea because it's a great natural escalation of the Logia class, because as they are, they can already control their environment to some degree, and if they wanted, they could probably become big old elemental monsters. But reshaping an entire climate seems very much in line with their naturally overpowered nature. And not only that, but it would actually go quite a fair way towards explaining how the One Piece world even exists in the first place. Because Punk Hazard might initially seem like an isolated example of weirdness, but there are plenty of islands within this world that exhibit overtly strange quirks, even for One Piece. And another example of this would be Raijin Island, which you may remember as the first location Mad Monkey Rouge visited after entering the New World, as well as one of the islands that the Straw Hats could have potentially landed on after the events of Fisherman Island. But this island has a teeny tiny quality of life issue, which is that it is being perpetually struck by lightning, in much the same way that Punk Hazard is constantly on fire and constantly snowing. So one possible example for the phenomena of Raijin Island might even be that this is the result of an awakened user of the Goro Goro no Mi, invoking their abilities here, thus creating an entirely new climate for what was probably once a very unremarkable piece of land. Or even more interestingly, we can examine the location of any Sobby, which is probably one of the strangest existences in the entirety of One Piece, because for whatever reason, it is always daytime at this particular part of the world. Now granted, there are a bunch of other potential explanations for this, such as perhaps multiple suns in the One Piece solar system that cross over in this specific area, and thus never allow night to take grasp, or maybe we could look into the light for the answer, specifically the light of the Pika Pika no Mi, and that maybe an awakened user of this Logia fruit actively changed the landscape of any Sobby, so that light would perpetually emanate in this location. Once again, for whatever reason. I'm still not entirely sure what that logic would be, but it is an explanation nonetheless. And this doesn't necessarily need to apply to the entire island either. It could be sections of a certain island because not every location in One Piece falls into a broad box. And here I'm speaking specifically about Wano country and its various regions, which experience a stark difference in weather conditions. For example, the flower capital would almost certainly define Wano as an autumn island. But if we move one region to the right in Ringo, then it is always snow Knowing, which is a massive weather change in such a short amount of distance. So perhaps a long, long time ago in the history of Wano, an awakened user of either the Hia Hia no Mi or even the Yuki Yuki no Mi was on the island and activated their abilities, thus forever changing the climate of Ringo specifically. And I will admit that the Wano example might be a bit of a stretch because we do have real world locations that can change drastically in terms of weather, even though they're right next to each other, but not very commonly and certainly not without some very drastic difference in altitude. But the thing is that the Grand Line is like this literally everywhere. So imagine a potential scenario perhaps thousands of years ago in the One Piece world. There is no grand line, it's a simple stretch of water that is incorporated into the other blue seas, if indeed they're still separated that is. And then all of a sudden devil fruits come into the world, creating a new generation of worldly residents with all of a sudden godlike powers eventually erupting into a global conflict. With awakened Logias facing off in this particular area of the world known as the Grand Line, recklessly changing the climate wherever they set foot, and thus resulting in the creation of the Grand Line and the New World as we know it, with its phenomenally unpredictable weather conditions. Or it could be none of that and the world was made this way by ancient weapons, the world nobles from outer space, or any number of other billions of crazy ideas like that. I just feel like Logias, after seeing the results of Punk Hazard, have a much larger part in the molding of this world than has been conveyed to us. I should also say now that there is at this moment no confirmation on whether or not Logia fruits can actually awaken, it's a boring possibility to think of, but they could be the only class not capable of achieving this level. Or there's the flip side of that argument in that Logia fruits could already be awakened. Like perhaps they used to be Paramecias and were awakened into Logia fruits. The possibilities are fairly endless, but my favorite one by far is the idea of climate change. And as we get closer and closer to the culmination of the series, I'm sure that awakenings are going to be explained in great detail, as well as displaying more than a handful full of occasions where Oda gets to show off the ultimate power of the Logia class. But that pretty much does it for this discussion on the potential awakening of Logia type devil fruits. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but applied to other anime and manga series, then please do feel free to check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the potential of awakening Logia fruits. This has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.
What are some things you don't like about One Piece? Mm, so there's not a lot that I really don't like about the series other than the anime adaptation, but there are definitely a few features. One of which is Oda's very boring design choices when it comes to female characters en masse. And the counter argument to that is that people are gonna bring up characters like Big Mom or Katarina Devon, but they are rare exceptions. And by and large, female characters adhere to a very cookie cutter design. And it's just so boring because the male characters are by and large incredibly diverse. And it's one of the greatest selling features of the series. The fact that Oda can keep coming up with new and interesting designs, for men anyway, but most of the relevant female characters have to be skinny, big tittied, average height existences. And you know you can actually look to Amazon Lily for an example of what Oda can do with female designs, but for whatever reason refuses to with most actual prominent characters. And something else that kind of annoys me is how certain straw hats have been pushed into the background in the New World Era, like Robin, Chopper, Nami, and probably even Frankie. And I get that it's very much the result of trying to revolutionize manga storytelling and focus on building the most expansive world ever featured in the format, which I very much do appreciate, and so I will often give Oda some leeway on that one. There really isn't all that much I hate about the series though, there are things I dislike, such as Sabo's very clunky reintroduction into One Piece, and the fact that bounties as an actual system in the world are pretty useless and unexplored. I mean, when was the last time we saw a professional bounty hunter that actually made any impact on the series? But look, everything I've said here is a very minor nitpick, and almost meaningless when considered, but in the greater context of everything that is One Piece, which is just plain awesome.